Okay, I don't know how many teachers I have gotten into an argument about whether or not project-based learning is an end of the year thing or a beginning, middle, and end of the year thing. So I'm gonna clear this up in this video by saying project-based learning is an every day of the school year thing. Not only is it the best way to teach in my opinion, but it is the easiest way for students to see how their learning fits into their actual lives. So in this video, we're going to go over how to use project-based learning to teach difficult standards and not just review and have fun with them, but actually teach your standards. And we're gonna be using math for these examples. All right, I can't wait. This is gonna be my favorite video ever, I think. If this is your first time to my channel, I'm April Smith. I am an upper elementary teacher who became an author over a topic called project-based learning. This is my book that has 100 project-based learning ideas. So over the years, I've done a lot of PBLs with my students and I've had a lot of teachers sit in project-based learning trainings with me and I've overheard them say things like, I can't do this, I don't have the supplies, I don't have the time to plan this, or this is, more like something I'm gonna do at the end of the year. So I'm excited about this video because I'm gonna show you how I plan and actually implement project-based learning so that my students really learn the skills and I can actually teach through the projects. So one of the biggest problems we have is when people come out to train teachers in project-based learning, they put too much emphasis on students doing their own thing. So student choice is very big in project-based learning. It is very important. But that makes teachers think, well, if students don't know how to do these math skills, how are they actually going to choose things? How are they going to complete the problems? Because it makes it sound like it's totally hands off. So the first thing that you need to know about this topic is that project based learning is not hands off on the teacher's part. Project based learning requires the teacher to actually plan and guide students throughout the project. This means that you can still do whole group mini lessons. You can still group, do small group mini lessons. You can still actively directly teach your students. You're not going to expect them to just learn how to do these math skills from just inquiring about things. And that is a common problem that I see in blog posts and videos and trainers that come to the districts is they say, well, your students need to learn through inquiry. And that's great, and they are going to learn, but there are moments where you are gonna actually have to sit down and teach your students how to add fractions, how to multiply fractions. These skills are not going to be just learned by them researching and looking online and finding some stuff. That is not how it works. What teachers do to create project-based learning that actually teaches the skills is we actually sit down and we come up with a way to guide students through learning these components of the skills and then applying them. Okay, so I'm gonna go over the very simple outline that I have for all of my projects that allows me to really plan what key skills I want my students to tackle and also helps me make it authentic. So in this video, we're going to be looking at an authentic real life project where students are going to be designing a theme park. The focus of this is really going to be math, but we bring in a lot of other subject areas, reading, writing, social studies, science. We can bring in as much of it as we can, but it helps me to focus my students on the math when it's something that I want to really incorporate and really teach my students and have them understand and apply. So we're gonna look at this project and figure out how we actually will use it to get students to learn a particular math skill. So the particular math skill we're really focusing on here is multiplying fractions. This is not an easy skill. It is something my students struggle with every single year and they seem to lose motivation because it is so difficult. So allowing for students to do this in a real life scenario has been super helpful. So if we look at our lesson outline here, these are just elements of project-based learning that I want to organize so that I know my students are getting an authentic PBL experience. So this is our outline for anywhere from one to three weeks, depending on how much content we're doing. These are not actually the step-by-step -step lessons or any of the teaching that I'm doing. I'm gonna show that in a little bit, but this is just our general um, outline so that I can make sure that they have a good authentic experience. 
So we have, first of all, our significant content. So this is where they're looking at um, multiplication of fraction by fraction. So that's something I'm actually going to teach. And we're looking at multiplication of fraction by whole number. So another skill that I'm actually going to teach. And we're going to use that critical thinking skills. We're going to use presentation skills. And we're going to put all of that together. We are going to learn those skills, practice those skills, and independently apply at the end. So it seems kind of crazy, right, to actually be able to take students through a one to two, maybe three week lesson and have them master multiplica multiplying fractions to the point where they're actually doing it on their own at the end. But it is totally possible. You can also see that one of the key differences between a regular standalone lesson and project-based learning is that we have a driving question that we use that drives every single activity we do, whether it's a whole group mini lesson, it's small group extra practice, or we are working on um, finding information or actually working on problems and context. Every single thing comes down to this driving question. In this case, it's how can I design a theme park with a variety of entertainment options that customers will enjoy. So we are going to be using multiplying fractions every step of the way, and I'm gonna show you that in just a moment here. Okay, so let's talk about how to actually teach fraction multiplication within this project-based learning activity. So rule number one, we are going to teach our students how to multiply fractions, okay? We are not going to get stuck in the mindset of, well, it's not PBL if we actually give them direct instruction. We are gonna show them how it works in the context of the project. We're gonna use our driving question. We're gonna find out how, how multiplying fractions actually relates to creating a theme park. We are going to use that in context to teach, to practice, and to apply. We are going to still use our visual models when we're teaching it, when students are practicing it. The visual models are so important. We want students to know how everything works. We want them to have hands-on activities. We want to teach that skill. The difference is we're not just doing that skill in individual lessons, just teach, practice, teach, practice, teach, practice. We're doing this learning to actually get us somewhere, which is to get us further in our project of designing a theme park. So as students start to learn these skills and get really excited about the project, we'll start to let them explore and actually let them create their own theme park using what we are giving them as a guideline. So we can't just hand them a paper and say, cool, you know how to multiply fractions, make a theme park. They'd be like, well, what does fractions have to do with a theme park? So you want to walk them through step by step. Here is the math we are going to do for each step of this. Here is how this math relates to this concept. And what we're going to do is we're going to continue to pull small groups with students who are struggling. We'll partner students up to, to discuss it and to actually work together and collaborate. We are going to discuss as a whole group. We'll continue to teach and reteach the skill. All of those things are going to happen within our project. So what this means is that project-based learning doesn't mean that you have to change the way you teach completely. It just means you need to tweak the way that you plan. You need to come up with a way to find a connection to real authentic situations with your math skills and all your other skills. And what you can do once you've planned that out is really guide students step by step using whole group lessons, small group lessons, intervention. You can still do all of those things you do in your classroom, but you're going to have students who are heavily motivated by the topic and also seeing how everything fits together and kind of works day by day. So I have a lot of students who were not showing up for school before I started to do project-based learning because their parents were working, they weren't making sure they were getting there. Lots of things going on in Title I schools, but once I started doing project-based learning, my students were showing up and they were engaged. They were excited about doing the math. So if you have a situation where your students are really not interested in the math or they're really behind and you just can't seem to reach them, project-based learning is the absolute best. If you got one thing from this video, I hope that you understand that project-based learning is just a guided lesson that moves on day after day and flows into a completed project at the end. Students have a purpose. 
Students have motivation and excitement, and those math skills are actually going to be in real life scenarios. If you're like, yes, I absolutely want to do this, you can, you have two choices. Um, to help you get started, I have my project-based learning made simple book. It does go over in the first chapter how to really plan these and has a hundred ideas for upper elementary. So this is a great place to start. However, if you're like, I don't wanna do any of the planning, I just want everything handled for me. I have project-based learning for every single math skill for the different grade levels, third through fifth grade. And you never know, I might change that after this video comes out. So definitely go in the link to the description and check out what I have available. I have in these projects, the full lesson outline, every single page that you need to use to guide students through the authentic learning within this scenario. So check out the link in the description to get access to that. And if you feel like this was helpful and you're excited and motivated to bring this learning into your classroom, definitely subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll have more videos on this. You can actually check out at the end. I'll link to a playlist that talks about all things project-based learning if you want to learn the basics. I'll also link in the description to a training that I have. It's a really quick training and it's really simple for teachers to learn how to create a project-based learning activity. 